First Peter 4. Start at um, verse 4. It's the book of First Peter, chapter 4, verse 4. We're in, they think it, it's like you. Start at uh, verse 2. First Peter, chapter 4, verse 2. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to lust of men. Right, so we can't live the rest of our time to the lust of the flesh, to the lust of men, man. Going off, being a sodomite, being a, a, um, a adulterous man, being an adulterous woman. That's all the lust of the flesh. Right, so we walked in that way when we was in the world, but now we're in the truth. We got to start walking righteous. Read on. But to the will of Yahweh. But to the will of who? Of Yahweh. To the will of Yahweh. That's the name of the Most High, if you didn't know. Read on. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. What did we do? Wrought the will of the Gentiles. So we wrought the will of the Gentiles, man. We was walking like the Gentiles. That's why the Israelites became Gentiles, man. Because we started following the customs of the other nations. We read the scriptures. They Hellenized us, man. We was calling ourselves Greeks. We love the glory of the Grecians more than the glory of the Most High. Read on. When we walked in lasciviousness. In what? Lascivious lasciviousness, man. We walked in our lust. We was burnt in our lust in the world, man. Read on. Lust, excess of wine. We was doing what? Lust, excess of wine. Excess of wine. Brothers was getting, brothers was drunkers, man. Brothers would wake up five o'clock in the morning just to get a bottle of E and J and drink till they can't drink no more. Give me that Isaiah 5 and 11. Read on. Hey brother, what's your nationality? What's your nationality? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Why you with them? What y'all doing with him, man? In a shrimp. Look at these people on that sign. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are men of strength. But they mingle a strong drink, man. Give me Proverbs 31. I believe it's 5. Start at verse 5. Proverbs 31 and 5. Bring it out. This is Proverbs, this is Proverbs chapter 31, verse 5. Lest they drink and forget the law. Matter of fact, start at, uh... Yeah, start at verse 4. Verse 4. And if not, start at verse 3. Bring it out. Verse 3. Give not thy strength unto women. Right, and, and this is spiritual as well, because the women are the, the, uh, the doctrines of the other nations. This philosophy is sin. The Lord said, don't give your strength to that. Meaning, don't give your power source to that. Don't set that up as a God. Read on. Nor thy way is that, that which that which destroy kings. Read on. It is not for kings. Oh, oh, let me yell. It is not for kings to drink wine. It's not for what? It's not king, it's not for kings to drink wine. Now this is spiritual, it's not for kings to drink wine, man. Read on. Lest they drink and forget the law. Right, so you start drinking of that wine, right? You start looking at these different video, Esau, the Arab, you start looking at that wine and philosophy, you're gonna forget the law, man. Then you're gonna start loving other nations. Hold up. I've been lied to. No, man. It's, that's you drinking of that wine. Read on. And pervert the judgment of any of the affliction of the afflicted. Right, that's it on that. What I had you over, brother? Yeah, yeah. First, yeah first Maccabees 1 and 9. Because it all goes back to Esau, who's the devil. The Edomites, the nation of Esau, the so-called white man. Read on. First Maccabees 1 and 9. This book of First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 9. Uh -huh. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. Read on. And evils were multiplied in the earth. Right, so when the Greeks came in power, evils were multiplied on the earth. Give me Proverbs 29 and 16. Right? Whenever the wicked are increased, more sin and transgression is multiplied on the earth. Alright? Read on. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. The Lord said. When wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. All right, so when Esau came in power, nothing but transgression increased on the earth, man. Just look at this man, hold up. That's not, that's not Hamashiach, Yahawashah. That's a devil. That's right. And the word devil just means deceive you for all you sensitive people out there, man. Right, it just means to deceive, and this is a deception. This is the biggest deception on the earth, man. That's right. 
right? Because Christ is a so-called black man. Hamashiach and Habashah, we have the, the scriptures to validate that. All right? Job 9.24, man. All right, so you Israelites come out of the ways of America, man. Separate from her. Give me Proverbs 6 and 5. Uh, start at four, you know, go into some Proverbs, some wisdom. Bring it out. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter six, verse four. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Right, don't give sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. In other words, don't go into sin. Read on. Verse five, deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter. Right, you gotta deliver yourself from America. From the, because America is the hunter, man. America will gonna kill you, it's gonna destroy you. That's why Micah said in Micah 2 and 10. Bring that out. Right, so you got to deliver yourself like a roe from the hand of a hunter. A roe is a deer, man. Right, when that hunter comes, you know the deer, they, they get out of Dodge, man. So you got to get out of the Dodge from the way of Babylon. Me, Micah 2 and 10. This is the book of Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Uh -huh. Arise ye and depart, for it is not your rest. Right, so America is not your rest. Read on. Because it is polluted. It is what? It's polluted. What is America? It is polluted. It's all polluted, man. Look around you. Nothing but pollution. It's the Sabbath day, yet you have people defiling the Sabbath. Going into their own worldly lusts. Give me 1 John 2 15. It's polluted because of that woman, man. 1 John 2 15. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, what the Lord say. Love not the world. Why you got I love life, brother. I love the way I'm living. Good life. Read on. Neither the things that are in the world. Right, so we can't love the world, neither the things that are in the world. Read on. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right, so if you love the way I love life, brother. Look, the love of the Father is not in you. What's in the world? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. The what? The lust, lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh, man. Homosexuality, adultery. Right, you got Jake to wake up, I'm gonna go commit adultery. Right? <laughs> Mr. Steal Your Girl Spirit. Bring it out. Slacker. And the lust of the slacker. And the lust of the eyes. And the lust of the eyes. Meaning covetous. You want everything you see. Your eyes is bigger than your stomach. Like Esau. You read a mic. Break it down. And the pride of life. of life. And the pride of life, man. People proud to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gay pride. That's a, that's a good point, brother. The pride of life. Hold up. The Lord said pride, pride is abominable. Give me some rock. That's in 10, 13. Let's see what the Lord said about pride. I'm proud. That's, that, that's what these people say. I'm proud of life. I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah, so rock 10 to 13, man. So rock 10 to 13, man. It's a book of Sirach. It's a book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 13. For pride is the beginning of sin. What the Lord said about pride? For pride is the beginning of sin. That's the beginning of sin, pride. Get out. Right? Somebody look up pride, man. Let's go into the etymology. All right? We got to go into it. Bring it out. And we're going to look up the word pride. Bring it out, Cain. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 31. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, said the Lord, God of hosts. For thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee, and the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up, and I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall be the and it shall devour round about him. There you go. So that's pride. So look up the, uh, the the word pride. And the Lord said, I am against you most proud. Who's the proudest man on the earth? Somebody give me Obadiah 1 and 3. We know who it is. It's Esau, the Edomites. The so-called white race. Bring it out. <laughs> this is pride, a feeling, or deep pleasure, or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements and the achievements of those which who closely associate Yep. Give me First Timothy 3 and 1. We're going to precept that up, man. Because that's how you know we're living in the last days. You actually have something called gay pride. Right? And the people they use to push their gay pride agenda is the Israelites. 
because they know we the salt of the earth. We have the most flavor. We have the most influence on the earth, man, because we God chosen people. So they're going to set up a so-called black man to push that gay agenda. I like uh, Malik Yoba. He said he's okay with being a transgender. All, right, all these other uh, rappers and singers that push that homosexuality. Who that? Say it again, Kane. Yeah, that Bob for Met spirit. And that's a demon. Bring that out, Kane. First Timothy 3 and 1. It's a book of first this is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. Uh -huh. This is true saying. If a man desire the office. Oh, uh, 2 Timothy 3. What's your nationality? Uh, What's your nationality? English and French and Polish. Okay. Y'all believe in the Bible? Sure. Y'all want to hear some scriptures? No, thank you. Alright, well. Uh, Y'all got to go in slavery. Thus <laughs> saith the Lord. That's right. Alright. That's right. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. Bring it out. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Somebody look up the word perilous. What about you, brother? What's your nationality? You don't know? Nope. That's the name of a white man, Merigo Vespucci. Alright, so... That's an abomination. If our forefathers heard us say we Americans, they'd be just, they'd go, they'd flip out. They'd kind of bug out. We a what? They might want to get caught up with you, man. You can't say you're American. Bring it up. This is prevalent, full of danger or risk. Read on um, 2 Timothy 3 and 1 again. There's a lot of spirits out here, man. You gotta stay in the scriptures. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. There's a book of you gotta focus out here, man. Bring it out. This is book of Second Timothy, chapter three, verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. The Lord said, "In the last days perilous times shall come." So we're gonna look up the word perilous. Bring that out. Yeah, we're gonna validate it. You know? <laughs> Full of. Full of danger or risk. What the Lord say? Full of danger or risk. Well, you know, perilous. It's full of danger or risk. Alright. Exposed to imminent risk. Read it again. Exposed to imminent risk or danger of ruin. Alright, so that's what the word uh, perilous means. Alright, so the Lord said dangerous and risky times are coming on the earth. Alright. Now give me 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Chapter 3 verse 1. This know also that in the last days, frivolous times shall come, for men shall be lovers. Hold on. Men shall be lovers. Lord, look, now I couldn't see lucky. For men shall be lovers of their, of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents. Right, it's a men shall be lovers of themselves. That's that whole gay agenda. That's that spirit. They, they love themselves and proud. Right, uh, it's ain't boasters. Yeah, yeah, men are boasters, man. You see brothers on Instagram and, you know, they got that, um, that, uh, selfie spirit on them, man. Uh, uh, proud. Unthankful and unholy, man. Right? So if you unholy, meaning you out of the temple, right, meaning you profane. That's the real profanity, man. Alright? That's what profanity means. It's not, it's not, it's not, uh, ass. That's not profanity. That's just the name of an animal, man. Alright, bring it up. Verse 3. Without natural affection. What the Lord say? Without natural affection. Right, so people are without natural affection because homosexuality, that's not natural. That's right. That's, right. that's without natural affection. That's an inordinate affection. Like the Lord said. Read on. Truth breakers. Give me Colossians 3 and 1. Truth breakers. False accusers. Incontent. Right, false accusers. Right, because Esau, they label us black identity extremists. They say we terrorists, man. You being a false accuser, Esau. Read on. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Right, and they hate us, man. Right, because we, we, we righteous. We keeping the commandments. We stand in the spirit to the best of our ability. And people are despisers of those that are good. Read on. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God. Right, so they love their pleasure, man. Right, we tell Jake, hey brother, you gotta grow your head, no, I'm not doing that. 
I love my bald head. All right, Colossians three and one. Yeah, Colossians. Let me read it. Has this written? Yeah, Colossians. This is the book. This is the book of Colossians, chapter three, verse one. If ye then be risen with the Mashiach, seek those things which are above, where Mashiach sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh. Right, so you got to seek those things which are above. Don't be seeking out riches of this kingdom. Don't be trying to, I'm trying to buy Bugatti, but I'm going to sell my soul to buy Bugatti. I'm going to get rich in this society. I, I, I want the American dream. Yeah, yeah, I heard a brother say he want the American dream, man. No wanting the American dream. <laughs> Read on. Verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Right, set your affection on things above, not things on earth, man. Read on. For ye are dead. And your life is hid with the Mashiach in Yahweh. When the Mashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate, so like it, inordinate affection. So the Lord said mortify your members which are upon the earth. You know what your members are, man. You got to mortify. Look up that word mortify. We're going to go into the etymology. I go into the definition. Search the scriptures. You know? And a walking abomination is coming up as we speak over there across the street. Is that east? Is that Eve with a, a Moabite? Hey, sister, across the street. Get out! You gotta get out. Get out! <laughs> Jackie Chan spirit. <laughs> uh, Chung Lee, man. No Chung Lee. Alright. Uh, man. You're trying to get that, that carry out money, man. No Chinese money. Bring it out. This is mortified. Call, so, call someone to feel embarrassed, ashamed, or humiliated. Right, so you gotta humiliate your members. Meaning you gotta humble yourself and deny yourself. Give me Luke 9 and 23. My Sarah Ishmaelite. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've seen in my life. It's an old boy bite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luke 9 23. It's the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 23. And he said, it's like he said to them all, if any man will, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. You gotta deny yourself when you wanna come out the Hamashiach Yahweh Meaning deny your flesh. Mortify your members that are upon the earth. Read on. And take up his cross daily. You gotta take up your cross, man. Meaning you gotta count the cause. Whatever affliction and hell you catching, hey, you just gotta deal with it. All right, that, that's, that's what it means to take up your cross. Read on. Say it again. Say it said me, wear a cross. Yeah, man. Take up your cross don't mean to put a cross around your neck and I want to up to the match. It don't mean that. That means you got to uh, take up the affliction that you that you were having in this truth. Read on. And follow me. Do what? And follow me. And for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall be saved. Sluggy. The same shall save it. There you go. Give me Luke 14 and 26. Which what I had you over prior to that? Colossians 3. Go back to that right quick. You give me Luke 14 and 26. Colossians 3 and 5. Verse 5. What if our Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, in order to uh, read that again, read it slow. Fornication. All right, fornication, a uh, uh, sexual immorality. Read on. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. And what's homosexuality? It's unclean. Read on. In order in ordinate affection. In ordinate affection. Read on. Evil concupiscence. A uh, concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. And covetousness, which is idolatry. All that's idolatry. All right. All that's idolatry. Give me first um, Peter 2 and 11.
1 Peter 2 and 11. It's the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. What the Lord say? Abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. The Lord said abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against your soul, man. Because this is a spiritual battle. It's not a carnal battle. It's not WWE. It's WWE through the spirit, man. It's not a physical thing where we punching demons and wrestling with them. And it's all spiritual, right? So the Lord said what in 1 Peter 2 and 11? Abstain from, oh, it's like it. Abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the spirit. Abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul or the spirit, right? Because that's what the spirit is, your soul, man. Give me first, so like, give me Ephesians 6 and 12. So it's a spiritual war that we fighting right now. And we gotta stay in the spirit to the best of our ability. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Start at 10. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Bring it up! Finally, my brethren, be strong in, in the Lord. Right, so you got to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in Yahweh, while Yahweh shall. Read on. And in the power of his might. Read on. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh. What the Lord say? Put on the whole armor of Yahweh. Right, so we about to read about the armor of Yahweh. By Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Because like I said a fourth time, this is a spiritual war. And within war, you have to have armor. Brother, you can't go out of war with no armor on. Read on. It's not going to end well for you. Bring it out. That ye may be able to stand against the, the wiles of the devil. Somebody look up the word wild. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Alright. Uh, Ephesians 6 and all. Uh, Put on the whole armor of your how about and Yahweh Shah, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Alright, so we're gonna look up the word wow. Okay. This is the word wow. Giverous or cunning strategies employed in, in in manipulating or persuading someone to do what to do what one wants. Right, and that, that's what the devil was set up to do, to persuade you onto wickedness. To seduce your spirit. Give me first Peter five and eight. Alright. First Peter chapter five and verse eight. You bring that out, guys. First Peter five and eight. Okay. And that's why the Lord said this in the book of First Peter chapter five and verse eight, because the devil was cunning. Give me um give me Genesis 25 and 27. He slid. He's slithering. Genesis 25 and 27. Bring it out. It's a book, it's a book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That's the spiritual demon Satan. That's what he was set up to do. Seek whom he may devour. That's why the Lord said be sober and be vigilant. You look up the word village, vig, vigilant, it means to be circumspect, be aware. All right, now give me Genesis 25 and 27. It's the book of Genesis chapter 25 verse 27. And the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter. Esau was a what? A cunning hunter. Right, that's what the word wild means, to be cunning. All right, because if you look up, read that again. And Esau was a cunning hunter. A man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Right, so you gotta be vigilant as well dealing with the so-called white man. I believe that's in um Sirach 9. Yeah, somebody give me Sirach 9 and 13. Alright, because uh, Ephesians 6 and um uh, 11 left off it. Yep, Sirach 9 and 13. It's the book of Sirach chapter, five, chapter 9 verse 13. 
keep thee fair, keep thee fair from the keep thee far from the man that have power to kill. Right, who have power to kill? Esau. Right, so you gotta keep far from that man. Not be integrated with him, not uh, hand held in hand, help hands holding hand with the devil. The Lord said keep far from him. Read on. So shalt thou not doubt the, the fear of death. And if and this is also spiritual, talking about the spiritual demon Satan, keep far from him. And how do you keep far from the spiritual demon Satan? By keeping the commandments and the faith of Yahweh Shah. Read on. And if thou come unto him, make no thought, lest he take away thy life presently. Remember, thou goest in the midst of snares. All right, so when you go before, it look, don't make no faults. Man, you gotta, that's why the Lord said, be therefore perfect. Because if you make some uh, some faults and some slip-ups, that's an easy leeway for Satan to come in and to, to devour you. Like it said in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Bring it out. And thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. You walk upon the battlement of a city, man. All right, so you gotta watch yourself.